Hey, how's it going everybody? Pragmatic Addict here. So, I was actually going to do this uh, video like a little bit later. Uh, I had originally planned to do this in like the middle of January. I was going to get some other urine lists out like before. But over the past few days, while well, I've been taking like a little bit of a break and everything, I've been getting back into gaming. You know, I've been catching up on some trophies and everything. Just catching up on some games, you know, that I kind of missed throughout the year because it was a pretty big busy year for video games and uh yeah after like i don't know man like nine hours or some shit of just gaming uh i should be sleeping right now it's actually really fucking early or late however you look at it uh but i was like you know what no i want to do this list now <laughs> so what we're going to be doing guys is we're going to be talking and looking at my top 10 most anticipated video games of 2023 now i do have some honorable mentions that I am looking forward to, but just didn't quite make it to the list. Now, I don't want to see say, you know, like, this is, like, me branching out or anything. L but, look, all I'm saying is that if this was the year for horror movies, 2023 this is the year for horror video games. So, without further ado, everyone, let's talk about my most anticipated games of 2023. So, uh, just to clarify, these will only be games that have, in the very least, a... 2023 release window so games like the upcoming skate game or kingdom hearts 4 even those games will not be on this list K kingdom hearts for example will more than likely i want to say release sometime in like 2024 even if it's late 2024 god damn it i hope no later so yes games like that for example will not be on this list but yes let's start with the honorable mentions so these games are in no particular order these are just, you know, games that I am looking forward to throughout 2023. Uh, again, no specific order, just ones I do want to mention. So the first one we do have here is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. So uh, heads up, the only reason why the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game is not going to be on this list is because I saw how the Evil Dead and Friday the 13th game came out. And the difference with Killer Clowns is that while it is like, you know, a big cult following like licensed property is not like a serial killer like genuine horror film following multiplayer game from what I'm hearing like you know Friday the 13th Texas Chainsaw uh, even Evil Dead this one like j just from like the trailers I've seen of it the passion behind it like they're they even like release like a full like comparison uh, like trailer between like the game and the movie and it looks absolutely again just passionate as fuck um, I'm not too big of a fan of killer clowns from outer space but just like how bizarre and just ridiculous and stupid that fucking movie is seeing a game where i don't i i i, I don't remember everything uh if i'm correct you can kind of play as like you can choose to play as like the killer clowns or the civilians so either way just walking through that town as a killer clown you know turning people into fucking cotton candy or being like a civilian like you know scouring through the fucking town trying to get away from the killer clowns just all the passion and how much they're hyping it up i really am excited for it again just not as excited for the other ones way down on this list next in my honorable mentions list we have lollipop chainsaw remake so i wasn't too like big on this game i did play it back on the ps3 it was one of my uh, sister's absolute favorite games she played this thing fucking religiously and i just kind of like watched on the side points because she either wouldn't let me play or I just didn't want to fucking play this game. I mean, I thought it was cool, you know, from what I remember. It's like a Harley Quinn hunting zombies game. Again, I don't remember it too well, but I remember, you know, like seeing it again. Again, you know, in the very least seeing it uh, being played from my sister constantly. And like, I wasn't into it as far as like, you know, wanting to like really dive into it. But over the years, you know, I've, you know, obviously caught up to date with it a little bit more. And I would like to replay that game, which obviously I can't because I don't have a PS3. But again, you know, the fact that it's going to be remade from the ground up and everything, I would like to give it a chance. Now get into the horror area because there are a lot of horror titles coming out in the video game world of 2023. We're talking about Alone in the Dark now. So I never played this game, which is, you know, hence why it didn't get on the top 10 list. Uh, wasn't there, like, already a remake of it? I think it came out on, like, PS2, and then, like, I want to say it came out, like, before that on a console. Uh, I never played it, but I heard a lot of buzz about it. From what I've heard and from what I've seen, this is, you know, amongst the bigger titles, you know, in the horror, you know, genre. And, uh, again, with 2023 having just 
a massive list of horror remakes. Uh, this one being added to that list is, you know, equally just as hype, I think, for, you know, a lot of other ones. So that is my other one on the honorable mentions. Now, my last on the honorable mentions list isn't necessarily a game more than it is just like a brand. But we're talking about the Unreal Engine 5. So the Unreal Engine 5, uh, there are no titles released yet. There is like a few that have been confirmed to come out in 2023, but the footage that we've seen of this thing oh my god have you guys seen the body cam video game that they've been teasing uh i i saw a clip of that one i also obviously played the matrix awakens uh but the unreal engine 5 man holy shit just to see it in its earliest fucking days just the initial like here's what it could be from the body cam footage and everything oh my god man i cannot wait to see this. Uh, also, I, I, I do want to mention that like when I was looking up the Unreal Engine 5 before this list, um, the very few games that have been confirmed, uh, Layers of Fears is actually going to be on that... Uh, it's going to be one of the games, the first games to have the Unreal Engine 5, which goes into my number 10 pick, which is Layers of Fears. So I'm a big fan of uh, uh, horror games, and I do think that Layers of Fear, the original one, the very first one, is one of the uh, better and like you know more popular like indie title horror games. Uh, Bloober, I do think that they are a pretty worthy company. When you're thinking about like horror games, you know whether it be like even though like hit or miss titles, you know like Layers of Fear, Layers of Fear Two, uh, obviously um, Blair Witch, and speaking of Bloober, they will be mentioned again later on down this list. I I've played Layers of Fear on a couple of different consoles now. I played it originally on the Switch with a. Uh, the DLC, The Inheritance. I played them both and I really enjoyed them. Uh, played it again on the PS4 sometime later once Layers of Fear 2 released. Now here's the thing. I didn't actually finish Layers of Fear 2. I finished the first one in the DLC, but I didn't play the. I didn't finish the second one. which Because I just couldn't get into it, which is interesting. Because the first one is actually about a painter, where the second one is about a fucking filmmaker. So I really thought that I would be like really deeply invested in the second one, more than at least the first one. But when, as the second one was coming out... No one was really talking about it. No one was playing it. The reviews for it weren't that good. But I still played it nonetheless because it's a Layers of Fear sequel about a fucking filmmaker. I'm not going to pass that up. But I honestly just couldn't fucking finish it. But Layers of Fears, I am really excited because um, from the trailer that we got at Gamescom, uh, I don't know too much about it. It didn't reveal too much. But just the fact that they're continuing with the Layers of Fear series, I'm hoping that they'll like like kind of go back to the roots of the first game which was genuinely scary to me plus it is uh going to be again one of the first games on the unreal engine 5 which i'm very excited about number nine on my list we have bendy and the dark revival so i know that this game did come out on the 15th of, of november i believe on uh, steam but i don't actually have steam i've always been into bendy in the ink machine uh, i played it on a uh, ps4 uh, which is really funny because Back way before I had this channel, I had a very small uh, gaming channel where I only did like five games before I took the channel down. Uh, but Benny and the Ink Machine was one of the games I did a playthrough of, and I really enjoyed the atmosphere of it. Uh, I don't remember the game too well, but I did remember like playing it all the way through and really enjoying it. And uh, when I heard about you know Benny and the Dark Revival, I've kind of you know looked it up here and there as it's released, you know, which it did take a little bit like longer to release and from uh some gameplays that i've seen you know like markiplier playing it Mo moist critical playing it here and there uh, i haven't watched the whole streams because i i don't want to spoil too much for myself but uh it does seem like it's going into a darker route also the like little snippets that i have seen of like gameplay wise the gameplay does look like it really has advanced and that they really are passionate about making this the next you know not only like game in the franchise but making it better than the first one also that rubber hose animation you know obviously like you're inspired by like the mickey mouse kind of an anime style like cuphead was and everything uh that is obviously just a huge grab for me i think it is very you know interesting i think it's a very fun animation to use and making it into a horror game especially like bendy and the dark revival with how much i did like bendy and the ink machine when i played it how much they're actually advancing in bendy and the dark revival has me very excited so i am very excited to play bendy and the dark revival when it comes on consoles because they do have the playstation 5. next on my list in number eight we have directive 8020 which is going to be the next dark pictures uh anthologies game it is going to be the first game in the season two premiere which they have announced all the fucking titles of which is fucking crazy to me it makes me wonder 
how far along is the Dark Anthology's games, as far as, like, the development goes and, like, the whole layout of the games coming? How fucking much have they done? Because when I was playing, uh, what was it, um... The last game that they fucking released, I can't remember. The Devil and Me. Uh, in my review of it, which I did mention it in my uh, playthrough, uh, one of the premonitions that you could unlock was a little teaser and like a cutscene of Directive 8020. So I'm guessing that this game is gonna come earlier in 2023. But just like getting that kind of like surprise and that like reveal and everything with how the cutscene looked and you know with this being in space, I'm just like. They did, did. Is this game already done? And then with them like announcing like the next fucking five or six titles, I'm like, is the next two games done? How far along are they with this development? And like I also said in my reviews that like I've always liked the idea of like the choose your own horror adventure games, you know, like Until Dawn, The Quarry, of The Dark Pictures games. But it wasn't until The Devil and Me that I really got invested. <laughs> Devil and Me is by far, in my opinion, the best one and also my favorite. It's the first one that feels like it's actually original. It's trying new things that it really genuinely had that scare factor to it, especially in that hotel scene. So if this is like a potential like step in the right direction, which I thought that Devil and Me was, and they're just gonna, you know, expand from here in the right directions, seeing this one take place in fucking space... Look guys, all I'm saying is that if we get a Dark Pictures Anthology game, after this one that takes place in the fucking ocean at the deep sea or something? I'm just saying, it could happen. They got seven more games coming at least. But yes guys, uh, I am very excited for Directive 8020. Now going into number seven, we have uh, a little bit of a change of pace now. We have Pikmin 4. Uh, so this game is obviously going to be only on the Nintendo Switch, but uh, I have been waiting for this game for fucking years. I remember the first Pikmin game I ever played was Pikmin 3 and it was because like I was the only person in the fucking world that had a Wii U and that was like you know with no one else really having a Wii U that I knew I had to look up for myself okay what are the best Wii U games and I saw Pikmin 3 and you know I had the GameCube growing up it was uh the first big console like the first console that was actually mine that I actually you know ever owned so I hold the GameCube very close to my heart but I never played the Pikmin games my friends had them and everything but like I just didn't get it you know, I was more of like a Mario guy and everything, and uh, the Pikmin series, I just, I never got into it. But when I f finally looked up Pikmin 3 and I saw the gameplay, and this is like 2013, I, I, I believe it was. Oh my god, the graphics for that, and how the game ended, which I won't spoil those, uh, for, for those that haven't played it. I know that's a weird thing to say, but Pikmin 4 is finally coming out. Maybe people will play Pikmin 3 for the first time. Did Pik yeah, Pikmin 3 did release on the Nintendo Switch. Never mind, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but uh, with how the game left off and how much I fucking loved that game and how good it was for its time, and again, it was one of the most acclaimed games of at least a Wii U. Every E3 after that, I, I kept saying it to my, to my buddy Tower. I was like, it's going to happen. He's like, dude, it's not going to happen. Every fucking year i think it was up to like 27 maybe 2017 maybe even 2018 and i think it was like 2019 when i was finally like it's not gonna be here is it and he's like no dude it's not gonna be this e3 it's not going to happen and then i think they announced like the 3ds title and i was so hyped i was like it's happening he's like it's not happening a couple years later they released pikmin 3 uh i think it was like last year or something the year before they released pikmin 3 on the switch and i'm like it's happening. He's like, dude, it's not happening. And then, in the Nintendo Direct, which I didn't see, I got a message from him. And he said, dude, it fucking happened. I saw that announcement trailer and I pretty much wet my pants. I cannot wait for Pikmin 4. I can't wait to see how much they've done with it over the years. Because this thing has been in development for a long fucking time, man. This thing has been teased for years, but we never really got, like, an actual confirmation. It was just kind of, like, people from Nintendo saying, like, yeah, Pikmin 4 is happening. I was like, it's not Pikmin. It's a fucking remaster. It's a fucking other DS game. But we finally got that announcement, so it makes me think, like, for the past seven years, has this actually been in development, and how much have they done with it? Because, I mean, the Nintendo Switch has been out for a few years now. We all thought that this would not only be one of the first uh, Nintendo Switch titles, but hopefully it would have even come during the Wii U, which I think was supposed to. I think, like, Pikmin 3 was supposed to come on the Wii, if I'm not mistaken, and then Pikmin 4 was going to be on the Wii U. But we are now at the, like, 
maybe the end of Nintendo Switch's life. I, I don't know how long it's been. It's been like, what, 2016? It's been a, a long time now. And we have only gotten that announcement trailer, which was saying that it was going to come out in 2023, which obviously, yes, it has been in development for at least some time. So I'm very excited for Pikmin 4. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that final, like, release date and, like, next trailer at E3 or what. I don't know how late in the year it's going to come out. But I cannot believe that we are finally getting Pikmin 4. Oh my god, how long have I been talking about Pikmin 4? Let's go to the next one. So like I was saying earlier, you would see Bloober back on this list, and obviously, yes, we have Silent Hill 2. So again, uh, I'm not the biggest, like, enthusiast of Silent Hill 2. Uh, I really respect it, because I know about it, obviously, you know, PT. Oh my god, still one of the best horror games I've ever played, maybe the best. Oh my god, PT. It's not coming back. But we are getting Silent Hill 2, which is not from Hideo Kojima, but it is from Bloober, again, the people behind Layers of Fear. So I don't know how good it's going to be. It could be like a hit, and, hit or miss, but Silent Hill 2 is obviously the best game in the series. It is also one of the very best horror games ever made. So seeing this rebuilt from the ground up on the PS5 from Bloober, I have that much hope in it. I do need to see more, but I am excited for this game nonetheless. Top 5 now, we have Spider-Man 2, which recently got confirmed to have a fall 2023 release. We all knew it was coming out in 2023 when they announced, uh, when they, when they, like, first saw, like, the big trailer for it, uh, along with, like, Wolverine. It said 2023, we just didn't know when. But we have it confirmed that, uh, it is coming out in fall 2023. Now, I really like the Spider-Man games. I've platinumed, uh, both this, the first one and Miles Morales. Absolutely love these games. I've done the new game plus. I've done the uh, DLCs for them. I absolutely love these games. And obviously at the end of the first game when we got the Venom Tees and, you know, seeing Harry Osborn and the fucking glass and everything. When was this? 2017? Five years, man. Five years! I've been waiting on bated breath. But we are finally getting Spider-Man 2, which, uh, from what we've seen, it looks like he is gonna be teaming up with Miles Morales. Now, Venom will be in the picture. I don't know how much of a role he's gonna play or who else is gonna be in it. You know, again, Harry Osborn born coming into it. I'm really excited to see how that all connects. Uh, there is a lot of big hype over Spider-Man, obviously, right now because of No Way Home. Obviously, uh, in, or across Spider-Verse Part 1 coming out. I gotta say, man, even before the PS5 was fully, like, revealed and everything released, Spider-Man 2 was was like it was one of those games where it was like okay so we know the ps5 is coming out we know spider-man 2 is going to be on that we got to see spider-man 2 so yes i've obviously been waiting for this game for a very long time it seems now and i can't wait to play it next year going into number four now we have uh so thank god i'm doing this list it was funny because i was like thinking i'm like so obviously I was going to do this like list a couple weeks from now, like in the middle of January. But like some of the last games on this list are coming out like at the end of January. So we got to get this list out there. And yes, we have the Dead Space remake. So I recently played Callisto Protocol. It's not one of the best games I played in 2022. But I, I played the game uh, on launch of Callisto Protocol. And I just got to say... It sucks that I played it. It sucks that this game even happened because it does make me a little bit nervous for Dead Space because obviously Dead Space 1 and 2 are masterpieces when it comes to horror games. And obviously Callisto Protocol was, you know, obviously was, you know, released just to build on the hype of Dead Space Remake. It's from the same developer. It is literally the same fucking game, just a cheap knockoff. You got telekinesis powers. You're in a fucking you know, space prison thing trying to break out with fucking monsters coming at you. It is Dead Space, but not Dead Space. And again, it's from the same developer of Dead Space, but it, like, it just makes me, there's, like, after I played the game, there were so many questions I had, just like, why did you release this a month before Dead Space Remake? Why would you, having worked on the Dead Space games, the masterpieces that they are, make this game? Why did you make it so similar to Dead Space, but so much shittier? So I'm hoping that this Dead Space game can just be like an I'm sorry gift to everybody, and I hope that it is, you know, gonna be just as good as, like, you know, the Resident Evil remakes were. I hope it is one of the, again, amongst the many horror remakes coming out, I hope it is one of the better, you know, horror games to come out in, you know, 2023. And I hope it is also as good to spawn, obviously, the remake of Dead Space 2. I actually forgot one that was on my, uh, uh, honorable mentions list. I'm looking at my list here and I'm like, how did I forget that, motherfucker? Alan Wake 2! So I played Alan Wake, uh, just last year I think it was like last year or, or like 2020 uh whenever the game came out and it was funny because both my roommates had COVID 
and uh, I was working like at a job where, you know, obviously if my roommates had COVID, I couldn't go to work. So I didn't have COVID, but I was off for like two weeks and it was like right at the launch of Alan Wake. So I'm like, I'm just going to play fucking Alan Wake. And I never played it on the PS3 uh, when it released, but like I had kind of gotten like a little bit obsessed with the game, even though I never played it because uh, I, I had heard so much about it. I heard it was so acclaimed and that it was like about like a, it was like a horror game about like a horror writer. It had like nods to like The Shining and Stephen King like sprinkled throughout of it. And I finally played it and I, you know, I, I, I beat it and everything and uh, I didn't love it, but... You know, I obviously played the game and I played the DLC and then uh, when I heard that the sequel was coming and that it was going to be more actual survival horror based, like that's what they're saying. They're saying that like, while Unwake isn't like, you know, it is kind of a horror game, Alan Wake 2 is going to be a dead fucking ass horror game. And I can't fucking wait for that. It is coming out th this coming year on the PS5. Uh, that was one of my other honorable mentions that I'm glad I remembered. Now the t final top three uh, most anticipated games of mine in 2023. Number three, we have Outlast Trials. So I love Outlast 2. It is one of the funnest horror games I've played. I've beaten it like three times. It takes place in Arizona, which is where I live. So that's another cool thing. Uh, so I have the Outlast Trinity pack, but uh, I never really got into like Outlast 1. I like the atmosphere, you know, like you're this guy like investigating like this asylum obviously with that being the first outlast game you know seeing like how like the found footage kind of stuff works and everything you know saving your battery and everything using night vision but like i just never got into it now the second one where you're like you know your wife goes missing and everything and you're walking through this like you know this like arizona desert you're coming across this cult you're like having flashbacks where you're playing sequences in like fucking schools and shit which is really fucking creepy and really fun now i saw the beta gameplay some of it of outlast trials and this thing looks fucked up now i don't know if this is going to be multiplayer i don't know if it's going to be a vr but uh me and my buddy tyler were talking about it and he, you know we were like we don't know how good it's actually going to be but uh but i haven't talked with him about the actual like beta gameplay i haven't talked to him about it uh, but i saw like the gameplay and oh my god so obviously the outlast games are some of the scarier games are on many like scariest horror games list or some of my favorite horror games to play but this one looks like it is really going to be upping it just in absolutely every fucking way. The characters that you're running from, the aesthetic, the designs of the characters. Holy shit, man. Like, again, I've only seen, like, a couple minutes of the beta, and I'm like, this is already possibly, like, one of the scariest games that's gonna come out. I can't wait for Outlast Trials. I've been looking forward to it for a long time, and, you know, I don't know when it's gonna come out, but as we get more trailers, I'm really, you know, I cannot wait to see them. Now, these final two, it was a hard pick between these two. It really could have gone either way because these are probably like some of the most anticipated games for like most gamers, especially uh, this one I'm going to announce right now. But I'm going to have to give the number two spot to Resident Evil 4 just because the next game, I think it is like, you know, what you obviously you know what it is. I've done like five trail reactions for it. It is SpongeBob Cosmic Shake. Just because SpongeBob Cosmic Shake is like a more original game and I love the fact and I can't honestly believe it that they're actually going back, you know, to like a spiritual successor of Battle for Bikini Bottom, which this is an original Spongebob game in 2022, which has been a long time since we've gotten a good, decent, like original Spongebob game. And seeing that it's going back to like the past, like the first three seasons, like Battle for Bikini Bottom, I'm just sitting here like, you did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did it. And how much they're hyping this game up, man. I mean, we've gotten like six fucking trailers. We're probably going to get a launch tra trailer as well. We got a fucking languages trailer. We've gotten every kind of trailer for this game. And, uh, even that like initial announcement, they had obviously been working on it for a long time, so I'm just happy that that game is releasing. Uh, I don't really need to talk about my number one pick anymore, but going back to number two, Resident Evil 4. So Resident Evil 2 and 3, the remakes were very good in my opinion. Uh, obviously Resident Evil 4 is like maybe the best game in the series. Uh, I really like Resident Evil 4, uh, but I think that like it's between that one and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard that are like my favorite of the series. Obviously like you know how good Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes were, you know how, how good they sold, how well they did with reception, and obviously how big Resident Evil 4 is to the Resident Evil community. We all knew it was coming, but we just we kept searching it, man. We kept like the second like Resident Evil 2 came out on launch, and it was like, oh yeah, this game's fucking good and it's selling well. And then we got the hint that like Resident Evil 3 was coming. 
We just could not wait for Resident Evil 4. Fuck Village, man. Give me 4. And then they, like, released, like, the Oculus, like, VR thing, I think it was. We all knew that this was coming, and it looks absolutely glorious. I can't wait to see how this game looks from the ground up. All the bosses, you know, the giants that you fight, the water monster and everything, and seeing the fucking village. I can't fucking wait. But yes, guys, that is it for my top 10, uh most anticipated video games of 2023 let me know which of these are on your guys' list also let me know what your guys' lists are down below there's a lot of games coming out in 2023 holy shit and i can't wait to play these ones uh so yes guys let me know what you thought about the video down below as well as uh you know which games you are looking forward to but with all that being said guys uh take care i hope that you're having a fantastic morning also with this maybe probably being my last video of 2022 i just want to say thank you guys um I mean, not only because it is the end of the year, but, like, earlier this year, believe it or not, I was only, like, in the low hundreds of, like, subscribers. Now I'm in, like, the mid-300s, which is nuts. I don't even know how it fucking happened. Like, five months ago or some shit, I was at, like, the high 100s. I'm in, like, the mid-300s, and it's, it's just moving fast. It's crazy. It is really showing me how much you guys watch my content and how much you guys really, you know, listen to me talk and everything, how much we have a, a mutual kind of, like, uh, ground and everything. And it's just amazing to do, guys. So, again, thank you guys so much, and I hope that you guys are having a great morning. I will see you guys later on this week with some more videos. Take care.